Uh, hello everyone, I'm Sangjin Kim, the second speaker of this session. Implementing container privilege escalation detection using eBPF for cloud native security. eBPF is an innovative feature of Linux systems for safely run a user's code in the kernel space. This is widely known for performance instrumentation and system tracing, but it could also be useful for the container security. In this talk, we discuss how eBPF uh, could be used to detect a malicious privilege escalation that causes a container escape. Containers are relatively lightweight and portable virtual instances compared to virtual machines. It packages applications and all its dependencies into a container image. Containers allow us to package and deploy large-scale application workloads quickly. These features make containers more popular in a microservice and a DevOps environment. From a security point of view, it has a thin isolation layer. It relies on the namespace and C group mechanism uh, provided by the Linux system. The namespace provides containers with the process, network, and IPC space separate from the container host. And the C group restricts the resources on the host that containers could use. Those isolations create minimal barriers between containers or between containers and the container host. However, since they share the same host kernel, containers additionally leverage the Linux system's kernel security mechanisms. Capabilities at Armor and the second are the security mechanisms for restricting system level functionalities. The following figure depicts a system architecture with containers. It shares the kernel of the host operating, operating system. And the container runtime performs an isolation by using the namespace and the C group when a container instance is created. Hardware virtualization by the hypervisor is not performed in a container environment. Unlike virtual machines, uh, it does not require a guest operating system, uh, so the performance overhead is relatively small. Instead of a slow virtual machine boot up, uh, you could have a fast application boot up times in seconds. Sharing the kernel without doing a hardware virtualization uh, offers performance advantages. However, sharing the host kernel could cause serious security threats. For example, if there is a security bug in the kernel, an attacker process uh, inside the container could break out the container and compromise the resources of the host system. This is called the container escape attacks. Specifically, it refers to an action or state that goes beyond the bounds of a given resource or permission for a container. Among them, a malicious privilege escalation is a prime example of container escape. The host kernel may have multiple vulnerabilities. Many attack vectors exist, such as memory corruption, code injection, and race conditions. Not all kernel vulnerabilities support container escape. Recently, many security researchers checked the container's impact when they discovered a kernel vulnerability. And when possible, they refer to that as a vulnerability that could cause a container escape. Also, some exploits are blocked by the isolation layer or a security mechanism. However, some security settings do not mandatory or the vulnerabilities still affect container security if you disable several security settings, such as a default second profile. For example, 
it can be safe if there is a security bug in a system call, but the default profile blocks that system call. However, in some container runtimes or orchestrators, the second profile is not mandatory and may cause a container escape attack success. So let's talk briefly about the container escape scenario. Suppose the kernel has a buffer overflow vulnerability. First, a remote attacker with access to container number 3 exploits the remote code execution bug of application 3 to execute a kernel exploit code. And then, a uh, part of the exploit code could be executed with root permissions. And then, an attacker could use privilege escalation to disable security settings for the post-exploitation procedure or execute a backdoor. In this flow of attacks, the privilege escalation is one of the attack attacker's primary targets. The figure is MITRE's container attack metrics. We could see that after the initial exploitation, there is a stage when, where an attacker requires a privilege escalation in order to continue malicious behavior such as data exfiltration or lateral movement. Here, we briefly describe how exploit codes for Linux systems, including container environments, perform privilege escalation. They contain the process's credential structure and two main kernel functions. There are some things that need to be done before a privilege escalation, but we will only summarize the required part to explain the defense mechanism. The prerequisites include hacking methods to bypass protection mechanisms uh, such as SMEP, SMAP, uh, or KASLR. The figure shows the data fields of, uh, of a credential structure. Attackers focus on tampering with values such as UID, GID, or CAP permitted. The prepare kernel cred function is used by the kernel to change the privileges of a task. That function creates a new cred structure uh, containing the credential information you want to change. If the daemon passed as an argument is null, an init cred stru structure with credential information set to root privilege is returned. The commit cred function must be called to update the process's credential. That function is responsible for installing new credentials into the current process. The process refers to a new credential structure through the RCU read copy update method. The reference count is decremented while referencing the newly created credential structure and releasing the previously referenced credential structure. This single line of code is well known to be uh, used by attackers. Many exploit code gets root permission by executing that code. The prepare kernel cred function takes zero as an argument and creates a root credential with all capabilities enabled. Then reference the newly created root credential via the commit cred function. As a result, an attacker process could gain root permissions along with a shared kernel vulnerability. Many previous studies counter privilege escalation through kernel exploits in Linux systems. Both studies account for the widespread abuse of the single line of code discussed on the previous page. The first study, ACO, noted that mandatory access control on Linux system is insufficient to combat kernel exploits. In general, the credential of a user process is changed by the system calls such as SEMUID 
or set GID. ACO performs a series of observations by modifying the system core handler. It detects if the credential data field changes when several system cores other than legitimate ones such as set UID or set GID. The second study covers the container environment. The container rarely calls the commit cred function or changes the cred credential data except during the initial bootup process. So it modifies the commit cred function to check whether the process that is called that, that function uh, is in the container or not. If the process is inside the container, you may suspect that malicious behavior has occurred. The third study implemented a reference monitor in the kernel that monitors changes in the credential structure. The monitor verifies access to protected data according to predefined policies. For example, you could allow only a whitelisted process uh, to change the credential structure. The fourth study uses a method similar to ACO to detect tampering with sensitive data through system calls other than legitimate ones. The following table is a summary of the four previous studies mentioned. All studies focus on the tampering of cred credential structure and the detection logic is executed at the time when a system call or a kernel function relative to privilege escalation occurs. This table shows the implementation of previous studies. All studies have modified the kernel and in order not to affect the functionality or performance of the kernel, uh, the location of the code change is carefully selected and only the minimum code is added. However, these attempts can, cope, can increase uh, operating costs in a production environment. Although existing studies have minimized the side effects on the kernel, a build or test system is needed to maintain the changed custom kernel and respond to kernel updates. Moreover, there may be a risk that the detection logic won't work depending on the kernel update details. In other words, the implementation of the previous studies has fundamental limitations in practicality. eBPF could help practicality when running user code in the kernel. It is a default feature built into the kernel and users could write code that runs in the kernel while complying with some constraints of eBPF. It also has a verifier that checks for kernel crashes, uh, which is better than no verification, uh, at least in kernel modules or custom kernels. For the detection logic implementation, the user could attach the eBPF code in KPro uh, to hook the commit cred function. Hello, I'm In Hyuk Chang. I will talk about implementations in this presentation. With the rapid proliferation of cloud native environments, the kernel's role has become more important. In particular, in a cloud native environment, it has become common to isolate and operate multiple containers on a single host. So the consequences of kernel vulnerabilities or excessive privilege assignment may be more serious. From another point of view, it can be seen as a better way to monitor the kernel's privilege management in a cloud native environment. Escalations of privileges within a container are less common than those on a host. Because each container has what the application needs to do and what permissions it can have. This is because, assuming container best practice, it is normal that no work is observed during the container execution 
that demands new high privileges and undermines container immutability. From this perspective, we think it is meaningful to observe the critical data structure in which the kernel's privileges are managed and the privilege changes in the container process when the privilege change takes place. This is especially true because eBPF enables realistic host-based monitoring. We apply the following principles to observing the elevation of privilege in the kernel for container security. Here, we compare the current privilege with new privilege when com create is called to check whether privilege escalation occurs. Also, check whether the new privileges are more escalated than the lowest privileges observed from the creation of the container process to the present. Finally, check whether the new privilege is greater than the parent process's privileges. Various methods can be considered to monitor for violations of these principles. First, consider tools using eBPF. Also, for direct implementation, you can consider implementation using BPF Trace, BCC, and consider BPF Core for portability. The first thing that comes to mind as an eBPF open source tool is BCC tools. BCC tools provide various tools for observing system performance. But unfortunately, there is no tool for observing privilege changes. However, there is a capable that monitors CAP capable. This may allow some degree of monitoring of privilege requests. However, it is necessary to add the corresponding function because the return value is not observed by default. Also, it does not show information about the container process we are interested in. There is an option to exclude container process. The following is an example of the result of running the capable tool. You can observe which process requested which privilege. It is hard to tell if a process actually has privilege because the return value is not observed here. You can also consider FARCO, a CNCF incubating project, as an eBPF open source security tool in a cloud native environment. FARCO performs monitoring mainly on system calls. It defines detailed patterns for individual instances as rules. It is difficult to directly observe the kernel's credentials we are trying to do. The following is one of Falco's privilege escalation detection rules. It detects the well-known pawn kit, which is written to detect running PKEXEC by unprivileged users. You may also consider Tracy, an eBPF open source security tool. Tracy consists of Tracy eBPF, which observes and outputs various events of the kernel using eBPF and tracy rules which generates a security warning by receiving the output of tracy ebpf as input first of all tracy rules doesn't seem to have any rules for credential change monitoring this figure is a list of signatures provided by tracy rules there are various rules but we don't see the rule we want Trace eBPF observes changes in UID, GID, and capability when commit cred is called. If the current cred differs from the new cred, when commit cred is called, an event is raised. The following figure is Trace's eBPF code, which traces commit cred, and you can see that an event is sent if there is a difference between the previous cred and new cred. If trace eBPF 
is executed with the trace event equals to commit class option, only related events are output. Trace eBPF also provides functions for tracing various events and acquiring artifacts. Therefore, it seems that using trace eBPF properly can provide the wealth of information. The list of events provided by trace eBPF can check with the list option. PPF trace is a high level tracing language and you can use the eBPF by writing scripts conveniently. BPF trace is relatively well documented and with many examples, one liners, and even books. BPF trace is mainly used for performance measurement. With BPF trace, you can read and compare kernel data. The following example compares the current ID values with the new ID value when commit credit is called using kprove and outputs it if there is an evaluation of privilege. The main part of the source code is extracted. Because it is a high level language, it is very easy and straightforward. It was very helpful when I first encountered eBPF and it is very useful when you want to simply check what's happening in the kernel. The following figure is the result of executing the BPF trace code. You can see that the changed ID values are printed along with the process information when the user ID or GID is escalated. BCC is a toolkit for creating efficient kernel tracing and manipulation programs. It provides good documents, examples, and tools Using BCC, you can write kernel instrumentation in C and front ends in Python and Lua. In order to detect CRED changes that violate the three principles presented previously, in addition to comparing the current and new CRED by tracking commit CREDs, a map that maintains the lowest CRED of the container process is used. When a task is created, if it is not a host process, the process information is inserted into the map. And when the task is finished, the information is deleted from the map. This map maintains basic information and credit information of processes, such as PID and PPID, and maintains the lowest value. When lower credit values are observed for the same process. Using this map, we compare whether the new privilege is higher than the existing lowest privilege or higher than the parent's lowest privilege. Additional tracing points other than commit credits can be used to compare current privileges with previous credit privileges. The developed de detection tool detects and prints container and host privilege escalation events according to the options provided. When the privilege escalation detection tool is executed and privilege escalation is attempted in the container, a warning event is generated, as shown in the red part of the figure. At this time, type 1, 2, and 3 are printed together depending on which value is compared with the new value. Although a function to detect a security event was created using P eBPF, tool distribution, information collection pipeline, and user interface are required to use in an actual environment. You can develop these yourself, but I thought it would be nice to have an open source already prepared. I discovered the Pixie project by chance in early 2022. Pixie has everything I mentioned earlier and is an open source of the CNCF sandbox project. 
Pixis data source layer Starling is a module that collects the data needed for Pixie from the kernel. This tooling is based on PCC and developed in C++. Tooling is implemented as a data source that utilizes eBPF and a source connector that allows the data collected from the data source to be utilized at the top of Pixie. Therefore, if the tool developed as a Starling data source and a source connector is created to show it, we can use Pixie for security observability, allowing us focus on implementing security features using eBPF. So far, we have looked at ways to implement privilege escalation detection using eBPF for container security and methods that can be considered for practical use. Thank you for your concentration.